Hello, listeners, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Casey Mraz, and I'm the host of the Lawyer Mastermind podcast, where we help law firms elevate their firms and sign more of the cases they want to build the law firm of their dreams. Today, I'm joined by Aaron Weike. Thanks for joining us today, Aaron. Thank you, Casey, for having me. Absolutely. It's always lovely to talk to you. And let me just start off with a little bit of an intro. So you're the CEO and co-founder of Leadferno. And as I understand it, basically, that's a pioneering platform designed to turn website traffic into valuable leads through innovative text messaging and communication solutions. You are a seasoned entrepreneur with a rich background in digital marketing, user experience, and software development. And your expertise has been instrumental in shaping tools that not only enhance companies' efficiencies, but also forge stronger connections between firms and their clients. Does that sound about right? It sounds about right. It sounds like a fancy way of saying I'm addicted to starting businesses and finding solutions for small businesses to work smarter and not harder. And we can relate on that 100%. That's actually like a core value of mine that I don't think I share enough, but that is like my dream and what I'm always trying to help other people do as well. So let's start off by talking about how you're doing that now. And could you just give us a little bit of background on like 30,000 foot view, what Leadferno is? Sure. Leadferno is a conversion tool that its goal is to start more conversations from the visitors that are coming to your website or other digital properties that you might own. We do this by placing always visible call to actions on the screen and letting the user know that texting is one of those options. So we overwhelmingly saw when we were doing research and we, we knew we wanted to create a tool that made it easier for the customer to start communicating with that business. And when you look at what's been available for conversion points over the years, right? We so heavily lean on forms and forms really aren't this wonderful experience for the user at all. I get this wall of fields. It might be as short as four or five. Uh, depending upon the business, it might be 15 or 20, how far they're trying to pre-qualify that lead all in one shot. And we just looked at that and said, there's got to be an easier way for a customer to basically raise their hand and say, I'm interested. I have questions. I want to feel a little bit more trust in what you're doing or get some clarification and take the process from there. Have a true like uh, level one step to take instead of so many forms and conversion options that users have are like, uh, mm -hmm. a zero to 100 for booking a call, making these things happen. And when we were weighing out, do we do this via live chat, which has been around so long, we easily saw that text messaging just had so many more benefits, it was far more welcomed by the customer. We can definitely launch into some of my thoughts on live chat for most small businesses and things like that with its pitfalls and, and challenges. But we just saw that texting was this channel to make that happen. And especially when you consider for any of us, it's probably pretty easy to think like texting is our number one communication channel. It's the number one app we use on our phone. So why don't we help businesses adapt to that and make it easier for that customer when they're consuming your content on your website to raise their hand and say, hey, I have a question and here's a super easy way to do it. I can just send a text to make that happen. I want to start by just like diving into that a bit more because like I know my, the way that I communicate on a website and I have ADD, so I think I should preface it with this. But I go to a website, yep. and then I start looking around. And then if I want to learn something or I want to talk to somebody, I do want that right now. And you mentioned you know, there's probably some issues with live chat. I know one of the issues that I have is I will start a chat, and then I'm gone. Like Maybe I'm like there for ooh, a flashy object or something else that my mind raced to. I change tabs. My notifications are silenced. I don't hear anything. And then I remember, oh, crap, two seconds, two minutes later, go back. And by then they're already gone. And that I find is a very frustrating user experience. And I know from using your product, uh, because it's something that we recommend to our clients, that that's not the case. And let's start by talking about why that's different, I think, because, you know, a lot of people don't think about texting when they go to a website, I think. Yeah, totally. So you mentioned before we hit record, Casey, that, you know, things are fine if I go off on a tangent. Well, you've already hit upon one of those topics for me. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, so, you know, bu buckle up while I get, let me know when you're ready to knock me off my soapbox here. So yeah, I, I literally, let's put it this way. I have a desktop, uh, I have a folder on my desktop called the shitty chat experiences. <laughs> and I am populating that thing like crazy, at least one a week where I'm taking a screenshot 
to include when I do presentations and talks and things like that. Like this is just bountiful. It, it's everywhere. You definitely outlined one where you go to start a chat and based upon how that firm might be staffing the chat or what's available, you get a message of like, you know, wait while we connect you to someone. And most of us have definitely developed more of a shorter attention span the way technology and our lives work now. We switch to another browser tab. We start doing something else. And two minutes later, when that uh, live chat agent comes in, we're gone. We didn't realize they came in. They're like, hey, hello, are you there? Whatever else. And then they close the chat. Now we have to go back through that loop. And do you think most people go back through that loop to join the queue again? No, you have to like no. really want to go through that. So that's definitely one part of it. You know, the the next one, I see all kinds of live chat tools where I call them glorified navigation, right? We get into, oh, chatbots and everything else. Well, the chatbot is just there to, oh, you're looking for this and here's the link to it. It's like, I don't need you to help me navigate the site. I need you to help me talk to someone to answer questions in, in my language. So that's mm -hmm. that's another pitfall that we often see. The next one is you're stuck with the live chat. If I start a live chat on my computer, I can't just grab my phone, go do my other things and pick up the live chat wherever that's happening. I'm stuck in that browser window with it. So when we compare that to text, where we start a text conversation, I can go do whatever I need to. I can go to another meeting. I can go pick up my kids. I can go to the store or shopping. I can do those things. And the conversation is coming with me. I don't have to stay anchored to somewhere. And my sole focus is making sure that that chat happens. Sure. And finally, the last one where I think is is the biggest one is so many of these chat tools end up with, hey, you know, we're currently not available right now. Call us or email us, right? And the whole point, the person clicked the live chat because they don't want to email. They don't want to call. So then forcing them to regress back through that channel isn't a desired experience. And we even found, we did a, a survey of 2000 US consumers. And in that survey, 57% said when they click on a live chat and it tells them that an agent's not available or we're currently offline, 57% left to the site. Like that's an unreal number for a tool you're putting on there to create mm -hmm. more conversions. It's actually driving traffic away and may, making people become disinterested and quit interacting with you. So yeah. those are all problems that how our tool works in starting a text conversation from the website solves all of those. It's portable. You send the text and it's asynchronous. So you send it and you know you're going to get a message back. We actually send an instant auto reply to any new lead comes in. So they instantly have gratification and you can set for them an expectation on when you're going to reply. They're in their most known and familiar app that they have. So it's not figuring out, oh, how does this chat work? And what am I waiting for? And what does this look like? They know I'm going to get a notification on my phone when this company texts me back and then I can text them right back. The communication is is trusted and simple with it. We capture leads all the time. We have two different auto reply messages based on your business hours. And so when someone texts you at 11 at night, 1 a.m., um, we automatically pull and be like, hey, thanks. Our office isn't available right now, but we're opening. We start replying at and we automatically grab in that time starting at 8 a.m. tomorrow, 9 a.m. tomorrow. And we'll follow up with you then. And we overwhelmingly see the prospects reply to that with, sounds great, talk to you then, right? They treat it just mm -hmm. like a human reached out to them. So when we look across all of those things, these are all consumer benefits, the prospect on your site benefits, but those are overwhelmingly, and we can definitely get into the side on the benefits that are there uh, for the, the business as well compared to live chat. But for 99% of small businesses, this is absolutely the better way to go for that user yeah. experience, all, all of those elements. And we're not even getting into how it makes your business run easier. And the fact you have their phone number and you can contact them at any time where <laughs> you can't contact them at any time. If you were in a live chat with them, like you can't pop up no, your yeah, live you chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, you're right. Sorry to interrupt you there. I mean, yeah. you said you unpack, there's a lot to unpack there, but I wanted yeah. to kind of start off. You said something, I want to reiterate one of the things you said. And it was basically about the chat experience. And what I kind of heard you say, at least as it relates to me, the way that I was thinking about it is that chatbots really have a problem solving customers pain points. And for, I know like lawyers, you know, when people need to hire an attorney, they're usually in a very dire situation or they feel they're feeling a lot of emotions. There's a lot of, there's a problem that they're dealing with. Right. And yep. chatbots are not providing that experience. And not only that, I also see it as a branding issue, like, because every experience I have with your brand, like that is your brand, right? 
And yep. if I'm talking and having a shitty experience or I'm not getting that information or that personal attention, that's bad for your brand. And of course, lost leads, lost cases, lost revenue, all of that. And not to mention on my tangent now, some live chat companies that are staffed will sell your leads to potentially competitors, depending on the plan you're on and things like that, that we've seen in the legal space, which is not yeah, cool. Crazy. So crazy. But, you know, overall, I've seen a lot of problems with that. I don't want to bash on it too much because, you know, I still tell people to use it in certain cases and things like that as well. But I, I do work personally asynchronously. So that helps a lot for me too, from the texting and just kind of already being there. But as far as those leads now, let's talk about if you have the engagement and you are on a live chat and they do respond quickly, you know, that's a good thing. What is your recommendation from a text perspective? I know you said, you said something interesting that, you know, hey, this is our auto respond. We'll get back to you at this time or whatever. What do you think as far as response times from actually having that call? Is it just the expectation that's important of when they know that communication is going to happen or actually engaging with them properly? What is what, what some of the data that you've seen there? Yeah, so most definitely the number one thing of setting an expectation is always number one, right? When you read any book or you read anything or listen to anything into the art of great communication, being able to lead the conversation and set an expectation is the number one thing. So when you're able to tell somebody what that might look like and you set their expectation and then you fulfill it, like you are putting that relationship on a happy path with trust and confidence and everything else. You know, that said, as a general rule of thumb, the faster you respond to anything is going to be better, right? In our world, we call this speed to lead. So the faster you're able to do those things, the more that customer says, I don't need to look somewhere else. I don't need to talk to someone else. I already have a solution in motion and I'm fe feeling good about it there. What we did find is from the data side in that same survey that I talked about earlier of 2000 consumers and just how leaky live chat was. We found that over 50% of those in the survey said, hey, a, a live chat to satisfy me, I need a response within minutes, right? So, you know, very quick, they're expecting it right away. The largest group within text conversations, if they're texting with the business, they need a same day reply. That was over 50%. So that was really interesting from a few standpoints. One, it shows for the business, like you have a little more grace and leeway because again, all the things we talked about Te texting is portable. It's their number one channel. They know they have a higher trust value in it and everything else. So they don't view that as like right here, right now, or you're losing me proposition. So this comes into that business side. When we talked about it, you know, a, a lot of firms it, that definitely weigh out like, oh, I need to pay someone else to manage this. I'm busy doing things. I can't respond within those minutes, but you can absolutely self-manage texting. Then you also get into the, you know, the world of live chat. And I know this because I've used it for my businesses as well. You may only have a couple of people in your company that are comfortable enough with live chat, right? So one or two people are users or have keys to log in and be available for live chat because that, that human is going to feel some pressure for this instant on, instantly available. I have this up in my browser window. And when I hear the noise or see the alert, I need to drop whatever I'm doing and jump into this conversation with them. So we see businesses be able to spread that very little. This also leads to, hey, we don't have a lot of coverage. We don't have people on and, and things like that, where with texting, they can. There's all kinds of business types we work with where they went from one or two people using live chat to now 15, 20, 25 people, their entire team having access through Leadferno because it's basically a, a texting app for them. So when we start looking at those things, the, the data shows us that you can delight your customers uh, better. They have more trust uh, in that channel that it's there. Those are definitely important things. But you know the, the root of what we're talking about is, number one, being able to set that expectation. In that auto reply, we see some people will provide an exact time, like, you know, 30 minutes, 60 minutes. Others will just say, as soon as I'm done with, you know, we're currently with clients, we'll respond shortly. So it doesn't have to be an exact time frame as well. But just giving them that expectation, that auto reply fires instantly. Um, there we look at a big advantage. And hopefully, you know, I would guess you guys correct this for people, Casey, as an agency, but how many times? Times if you filled out a small business website contact form or case evaluation form, and there's not even an auto reply email, right? Um, yeah. You send Often. it and you have no idea. Yeah. Who got it? Was it received? Does it go into the ether? What does that look like? I, I always tell this story. I, 
I had a couple of dings in my car that I wanted to get repaired. I reached out to a small business repair shop that does ding repair and whatever, filled out their contact form, uploaded photos was part of their contact form. I never heard from them. A month later, I was on their monthly email newsletter that they send out. <laughs> I'm like, so you're willing to miss when I have a direct ask and I'm a lead, but then you put me onto your email list to hopefully mature me into a lead later on. Like it was the most backwards thing ever. So that's the kind of things that can happen with forms that this auto reply helps solve as well. Yeah. And I, I mean, I encourage you too, just to, everybody should test their own forms as well, just so yeah, you brought yes. that up and, and see, you know, see what does happen. It's kind of like secret shopping yourself in a way, even <laughs> totally. more of that to see if you get that response. Now, how, one thing I don't think I've ever asked you about, how do teams uh, adopt to the, to the technology internally? Have you noticed a lot of friction or the opposite or I, I have no idea. Yeah, we see very little friction when we get back to, again, the familiarity when you go to your team and if you'd ask them like, hey, who's texting, right? Everybody uh, in your company is already texting in their personal life. So the beauty of our app, and it's modeled very closely, if you're using the mobile app, we have both a desktop and a mobile app. The desktop app is almost just like their texting app experience that they currently have. But now they just have this added layer of business features that make life easier for them, like a saved library of shortcuts. So you can have replies saved, links saved, questions saved, uh, things like that, that you can just send within a couple of taps instead of having to uh, type it all out. You're able to transfer conversations from anybody on the team, right? It's a shared inbox. So if you have 10 users on your team, you can transfer and say, hey, I want this conversation to go to, to Casey because he's the best person to help them or this is the step that's needed. And I can assign that conversation to Casey and then you get a notification that now uh, you have it. I can create reminders for conversations to come up. I can schedule messages to send in the future. If there's like appointment reminders, court dates, you know, materials being due or needed by a certain date. Uh, while I'm in work mode or talking to that customer, I can set those scheduled messages and those will automatically send in the in the future for me. So we see that adoption very high. It, it's interesting enough, more and more we see this now where even the employees are like, oh, I've, been, I've been wanting this, right? Like text <laughs> yeah. communication, it allows me to be shorter in my communication. It allows the things I need to accomplish to happen more frequently. Email communication gets really bloated, right? We've turned email into such more of a long form communication. We add a lot of fluff, you know, might be things not even prevalent to the conversation that that we're having instead of being focused to the point. And that's one of the beauties why we love text messaging so much in our life is like nobody is wanting to write you a 600 word text. So yeah. you're really getting to here's exactly the, you know, the nuts and bolts of what needs to happen or what we need to answer, or what we need to ask you uh, on, on both sides of the conversation. So we see a number relieved by that. It's so much easier for them um, to communicate. And especially if they're able to, we see more and more businesses looking to have move phone calls to text messages, right? Because a phone call might tie you up for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. In that same time, you might've worked through a dozen email conversations or sorry, text conversations because they're asynchronous and you're just pushing the ball back into their court, answering their question, asking a question, whatever that might be. So the yeah. efficiency for your staff, this is totally a work smarter, not harder. Uh, so most most actually welcome it. Yeah, I mean, well, you can respond to a lot of text messages in the same amount of time it would take to pick up a phone and call somebody. So yeah, I mean, I, I definitely feel you on that. And, you know, the other thing too, is I also like that you guys have the desktop app as well as the mobile, because, you know, some, I, I'm not this way, but I understand that some business owners or leaders are against people being on, the, you know, maybe their personal phone or whatever. So you have the desktop app. That's good. You can share that. And that probably also eliminates that area where you would get, if I was just texting you on my phone, for example, what happens if I don't respond to that in a few seconds, my same ADD kind of kicks in or whatever. And that would be a dead text, but obviously the software side of that, the technology side of it, the business efficiency side, you know, you've kind of solved that, right? Yeah. You know, a couple of different ways. One, you have multiple people that see that new lead or conversation come in. So on your side within the business, being able to have a process of like, Hey, you know, whoever can get a few, a first human interaction to this lead, please go ahead and take it. And then based on what it looks like, what they're interested in, whatever else, qualify them or set them up for a next step and then assign it to someone else. 
when it, when you think about you know being preoccupied, if that phone call is coming in, we can't receive that phone call easily and then transfer it off to someone else on the team, right? That's not going to happen while you're busy in, engaging with a client or whatever else. But you might have 10 seconds, 15 seconds within that time where a text message, because you don't have to be focused, you don't have to talk out loud anything else, you can take a look at it and you can just move and assign it uh, to someone else for them to pick it up or leave a note in it and say, you know, I'm tied up right now. Will you respond and let them know? I'll get back to them at X time. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, workflow and efficiencies, sharing of responsibilities to to contact that lead that you're able to do that doing those things by email, phone call just aren't a, as possible, don't work as smoothly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, you know, so far, mostly we've talked about, hey, this is an option. This is a way to get a hold of your potential clients or contact them, potentially convert them. But I think a lot of, well, I think a lot of firm owners fall into the same trap that just entrepreneurs are that kind of started off maybe as a practitioner in their expertise area. And then they kind of moved into the business ownership side. And so they're not really working on the business. So just kind of thinking outside of just that in initial things that we've talked about, are there three specific things or ways that they could use this to increase efficiency besides just responding to leads or maybe using integrations um, that you have or things like that? Yeah, for sure. So you know, the number one thing that we usually see as far as integrations, people want to integrate with their case management software or their CRM. So we have a Zapier app. So that's usually the most uh, common where we can say, okay, when a new lead comes in, create it as a new contact within our case management system, things like that. So there's a number of options with that. If that doesn't work, we do have an API as well that can be utilized at times. After that, you know, it's just really thinking through for a lot of businesses, they're smart to kind of sit down and say, okay, how can we build some internal process around this? Leadferno is a tool and we want to leverage this tool to our best. So what can we do within our processes that that do that? And one thing I, I, I haven't pointed out yet that I do like to always point out, our number one job is to create you more conversations. Once we start that conversation, we have a number of tools to do that. Not only texting, we have a feature where you can request a call and then you get that alert that a customer has requested a call. If they're still a phone first person, we send them a text auto reply as well, letting them know that they want to be called in the morning or afternoon. And we're going to do that, but they can ask questions over text as well. And you can also link to your existing contact forms, new case forms, um, things like that. That doesn't mean everything you have to do has to be in text. So mm -hmm. you can receive that first text message and then reply, great, I'd love to help you with this or answer these questions. Can I call you right now? So if you're still a phone person, I'm not telling you, hey, you need to change your business and do everything in texting. If you have processes sure. that work really well or you're inclined to use that, like you can move them just by replying and saying, great, let's pick this up over email, even though I think that's a bad idea. You can say, yeah, let me call you right now. You have their phone number. So it's really easy to do that. And we we probably see that method used uh, used by the law firms we work with and attorneys we work with more than anyone else because they're just you know so used to, that's so long been the staple to get customers, to get prospects, new cases on the phone and start start interacting with them. So that that's one side where it's like, you don't have to turn your processes upside down and like, oh, well, we have to do everything by text now because we have this tool. You don't yeah. have to. And then on the other efficiency side, right, I kind of mentioned the other things like reminders of things happening, communication throughout, you know, customers really appreciate the other nice thing with text over like phone calls is you have written receipts, right? You're able to see what happened in that that conversation at any point in time to review this holds true mm -hmm. for both the, the business as well as the customer that's there. So again, it's abbreviated. It's to the point you have receipts, you have a history of all that information that that's taken place. So if you ever need to review it, you can. So I've really seen, and, and I believe in, and I've seen businesses leverage this for the entire life cycle of the customer. And then when we get to the tail end, things like referrals, writing reviews, you're able to ask for that kind of stuff over text messaging as well. Then if you've interacted with them and we have a feature in ours where one of the first things we do is try to prompt them to add your firm to their contacts on their phone. Now it could be six months down the line and somebody's like, oh, hey, I have this thing. Like, hey, I have a great firm that could help you with this. Let me text you their contact info. And it's already saved into your phone because we created this V card that they downloaded instantly. And so now you can refer them that way. So all of those things are life cycle efficiencies that can be there for the business. Yeah, I love that. And you touched on so many, you know, great things there. 
And uh, the last kind of towards the end, you were talking about the review side of it. Like, obviously, that one's a big one for me just being a local SEO nerd. But, you know, yep. the ability to be able to text somebody when they're on their device, they click a link and they can actually leave that review and actually have a very a much stronger chance of actually doing it then, you know, that's great. Well, let's, can you share any success stories or case studies of law firms that have benefited from le using Leadferno? I know that should be my job uh, and it will be, I'll elaborate <laughs> on that, but I just wanted to see if you had any example of anything that came to mind. Yeah, there's definitely a few where I think the biggest things I would speak to, they have executed extremely well within their digital marketing and lead generation. And you know, the the amount, right? They're seeing dozens or more leads per day, right? And they're using text messaging and they're using our features to not only capture more of those leads, but mature them very quickly. So when you look at just even high level stats, a response to email, say they filled out that, that same form what they used to experience, the average reply time to emails is 90 minutes. The average reply time to text messages is 90 seconds. So it's a 60 times speed difference. And that holds true for both sides of the conversation, right? We've all had different email conversations where you take a few hours to respond back. Then by the time they see it in their workflow, they take a few hours to respond back. Like when you have this tighter conversation, you're able to mature that lead so much faster and get them to the next step, whatever your next mm -hmm. step might be just so much faster. So we definitely have some clients where we've seen that from. We've seen others where we've definitely helped uh, streamline their processes so that, you know, maybe their auto reply says, hey, here's how you work with us. Here's a new case entry form if that's what you're looking for. So they're just using texting as that initial in route. And then they're immediately sending them to a form to capture basic information and, and using it that way in a, in a no touch situation to be able to get that information. If there's anything else they need to ask or they see the user didn't fill it out within a you know, few minutes or a few hours, then they can follow up with them. They could then get it conversationally if they needed to. So we see some of those benefits as well. Mm -hmm. Within those, you know, sharing numbers and data is always so hard because we see such a varying impact. On the low end, I always say we see at a minimum like a 15% increase in their conversion rate from, from their website leads. So that's significant enough in itself. Obviously, when we're working with smaller firms that may only get a handful of leads within a month, we see some of those that might uh, creep more towards a 2x or a 3x, right? 200 or 300% increase um, because they only have a handful. So getting them another handful really has a, a giant impact uh, on what they're doing with it. Um, so yeah, that the numerically is kind of all over the board, depending upon the size of the firm, the marketing they're doing, things like that. But we're, we're going to see an increase. And one of the, the biggest things I like to point out adding text to your mix doesn't cannibalize your other types of leads, right? We have so many customers that share. This didn't just take my phone leads and my form leads and replace them. This adds leads on top of them. Does, you know, do some people when they have a choice then choose the channel they prefer being SMS? Yes, but it is getting us these lower barrier to entry. Starting a text conversation is that lowest barrier to entry to start communicating with a, a business and they're capturing bring more of those. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's all good. And I, you know, for me, I think that using text is a no brainer. Personally, I would like to see everybody does it, use it. But even if your firm goal isn't to be like the Morgan and Morgan, you know, whether you just want to be a smaller firm that takes boutique cases, you still want those better cases. So it is about providing an amazing customer experience. And I think that's one area where I think people like trying new technologies kind of fall into is maybe they have other problems and they think, hey, I should add yeah. this technology and this will fix it. Because some firms have those very established processes that work well and simply adding this in, it's going to be a huge benefit, but others may not, you know, and they need to kind of think about that because I, you said something about, you know, increasing the lead volume. And one thing that I've seen a few times this year is that some firms that we've worked with actually don't have a lead problem at all. It's an intake problem where yep. they're not maybe treating their customers right, or they're not getting back in touch with them, or there's just so many other ways this can go wrong from the time that first contact happens to, you know, having them as a signed client. I just nerd out on this stuff because I really encourage, you know, attorneys to put their business hat on and not only implement cool tools like this that are actually going to have a trackable ROI but also think about their business systems and their processes and their efficiencies and take that outside look in. 
So yeah. I love the problem that you're solving. And I love that, how it really is that kind of like branding experience for me, because you have the opportunity to really leverage this. And if I went to 10 law firm websites right now in my city, I bet one of them I can text right now. It's an easy yep. way to stand out, don't you think? Yes, absolutely. So there's two things that popped into my head that I, just to touch on real quick that I love. The first one, I love this saying, and, and you alluded to it, but the, the, the saying is, and I don't even know who to at, attribute this to, but it is a fool with a tool is still a fool, right? So <laughs> yeah. you have to have the right strategy and the right mindset to really leverage it and do it the right way. And to your second point, and it's something that I've written about on our blog, and I believe in this hugely, I think the new golden rule of business is being easy to work with. Mm -hmm. Hands down, number one, people do not want friction. They do not want to have to do the work. They want you to lead it. It's on you to make it easy for them to work with you. Don't make them jump through hoops, listen to the voicemails, return calls, play a phone tag, any of that kind of stuff. You need to provide the right experience to make it clear that you are easy to work with. I think that's the ultimate differentiator when we have so many choices of any product, any service, any vertical that's out there. And those are the companies and the brands that we see winning on small and large scales that are easy to work with. So I think just to your point, when you take that view of your business, you should be looking like, are we easy to work with? I got really excited. We actually, one of our vendors sent us kind of their customer experience survey recently. And I, I to be honest, I have kind of like a middle ground view on them. They provide some very valuable services to us. There's plenty of other things I don't love about their business. But one of their questions when asking, doing the survey about our relationship with them, they point blank ask the question, rate us how easy it is to work with us. And to me, that was just so genius to bring a data point to something that really should matter to a business. So I would say, yes, take your advice, Casey, take a look at your firm, um, put yourself in the shoes of the customer, be surveying your customers, be filling out your forms and see what that experience is like and be determining, are we easy to work with? I love that. Are we easy to work with? And that touches exactly, yeah, kind of on what I keep on harping about, which is that customer experience, your brand, you know, a, a lot of law firms have traditionally struggled in that area for whatever reason, but you know, it's good that, that you brought that up. And I think that needs to be on the forefront. So yep. is there anything else that we didn't talk about here that you want to kind of tell users about? And then also how do they find and sign up for your product to give it a try? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you asked. There's a million things that I want to share, but we don't have time for that today, Casey. But <laughs> it's it, easy to tell. I'm I'm passionate about this. I love what we're doing. I love you know the vision that we have for the future to keep making businesses easier to work with and to, to scale their conversation. At the end of the day, we want to start more conversations and make one-to-one -one conversation with customers easier. That's why, what it's all about. We want to help you form connections with your prospects with your customers and use that to your advantage to really uh, grow your business. Learning more about Leadferno is really easy. You can go to leadferno.com. I invite you to jump into our blog. You're going to see a lot of strategic posts and things we offer and things we do. We have a YouTube channel. You can watch a demo right from our website. So there's a number of ways to, to do that uh, as well. So really easy to track down that information, find out more at your own pace. Reach out to us. You can send us a text right from the website if you have specific questions or you'd like to set up a personal one-on-one -on -one demo. I'd be happy to help you with that if you click our text buttons on the screen and just get your questions answered to see if this is a, a fit for you. Awesome. And of course, I will include a link here as well so you guys will be able to access that. And just I want to thank you so much for you know taking the time today, Aaron. I know that you are very busy, but you are very passionate about your product. I personally love and recommend your product. And, uh, you know, we hope to continue to keep telling the world about it because, hey, let's just all get a little bit better every day. And your product helps us do that. I'm super appreciative of you letting me come on and taking the time to nerd out and discuss it, Casey. So thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll chat soon. Thanks, Aaron.